Liam Vickers, the man, the myth, the legend. It has been nine years since Liam made his presence known on the internet, and since then I think he has gone farther than he and anyone else could have ever anticipated. But today, I want to go back to where this all began, to the story that officially started him on his journey to greatness. Back on May 27th, 2013, Liam uploaded his very first video on YouTube, a scary story titled, Pretty Like Me. I'm going to summarize what happens in this story, so if you want to skip straight to the review, there will be a time displayed on screen, but I highly encourage you to listen to the story itself before watching this review. The story begins with a man, walking home from work late one night. Usually, he never runs into anything out of the usual, but tonight is the exception as he spots a woman in scrubs and a surgical mask walking on the sidewalk in front of him. She is described as though she can barely walk and moves in unnatural ways that makes the man believe she needs medical attention. The man asks her if she is okay and the only response he gets is her asking him if she's pretty. The man is confused but eventually says yes and she removes the mask and underneath her mouth is mangled and shredded apart with so many teeth protruding from her mouth that she can't even close it properly. She asks if she's still pretty and although the man is horrified he still tells her she is and then loses consciousness and awakes in his home. The man is confused and eventually falls asleep and a week passes by without any other incidents. That is until he's at a wedding party where he's eating chips and a tooth of his splinters apart and he rushes home. The rest of his teeth are fine so he's both confused and concerned. He decides he will call his doctor in the morning and goes to sleep but when he wakes up his tooth is back. He figures he just drank too much at the party and was imagining things, but to be sure, he checks the place where he left the pieces of his splintered tooth, and in its place finds a quarter. In a paranoid panic, the man deduces that someone must have replaced the tooth in his mouth with someone else's, and notices that the rest of his teeth are beginning to rot, except for the new one that was placed in his mouth. The man sets up a video recorder pointed at his bed to see who was breaking into his home while he was asleep. The man sits on his bed and tries as hard as he can to stay awake, but no matter what he does he can't stay awake to the point where he feels paralyzed. Right before he falls asleep, he hears someone open his door and walk through his house to his bed. He hears someone whisper pretty, and he finally falls asleep completely. The next morning, he looks around his house for any sign of the intrusion, but everything looks the way he left it aside from his mouth being filled with new teeth to the point where they are interlacing and bent in unnatural angles. The man checks the video camera but notices for some reason the camera is already set to play. The man plays the footage and in the beginning everything it shows is exactly the way he remembers it from him setting up the camera to desperately trying to stay awake. That is until the footage that would have recorded his intruder standing over him was supposed to play and instead the footage was taped over to a different scene entirely. The scene showed a body lying in a room mutilated to the point where the victim doesn't even look like a person anymore. The victim's mouth was held open by clamps as a power tool approached the single tooth left in the person's mouth, and before the footage reaches its conclusion, the man drops and shatters the camera out of fear. He runs his tongue over the new teeth in his mouth and vomits to the point where he's spitting out the original teeth in his mouth that are now rotten. Before the man calls the police, he notices something protruding from under his pillow and lifts it to see the surgeon mask the creature he encountered was wearing, a bottle of chloroform, and a pile of pristine and bloody teeth. The man hears drilling sounds coming from next door and the story ends with him hearing a whisper saying soon you'll be pretty like me. Despite nine years having passed since Liam Vickers began his career on the internet, after listening to the story it becomes evident that while his writing has become better, he has been using some of the same writing tropes ever since his first story. For example, one of Liam's most recognizable trademarks of his is, well, murder waifus, who generally are obsessed with the main character. So of course his very first monster in his very first story is a yandere-esque character. Then there's Liam proudly wearing his inspirations on his sleeves, like he does throughout many of his stories and his animations. You see, Liam is a self-admitted weeb. Although, if you look at some of his earlier work, that wouldn't be that hard to figure out. So like all weebs, he is very interested in Japanese culture, and in Japan there's an urban legend about a woman called the Kuchisaka Ona, who wears a surgical mask and stalks the street of Japan at night. If you encounter her, she will take off her mask and reveal that the sides of her mouth have been cut open, and she will ask you if she's beautiful. If you say no, she will kill you. If you say yes, she will remove the surgical mask revealing her mangled mouth and ask again. If you say no, she will still kill you. And if you say yes, she will cut your mouth so that you look as beautiful as she does. This story is such an on-the-nose homage to this story that when I first listened to it, I thought Liam was just retelling the legend, 
but once she revealed that her mouth was overstuffed with teeth and the main character survived the encounter, I was relieved that this wasn't the case. But while one expectation was subverted for the benefit of the story, another was to its detriment. You see, the story is labeled as a scary story, but in reality, it's more akin to a mystery due to the main character trying to figure out what's happening to him and him being in no real danger. The only point in the story where there really is any horror is when the main character looks at the footage on the video camera, which was effectively unsettling, but mostly because by that point in the story, nothing violent had happened and it took me off guard. And I wish I could say that this is the only interest where the atmosphere of the story as a whole feels confused. There is a tonal whiplash when the listener is trying to connect the dots on what is really happening in the story, and the listener is steered to believe everything that is happening is of supernatural origin, only for the ending to reveal a rational explanation on why the main character falls asleep so easily and where his new teeth come from. But there is never a point in the story that explains how his teeth are rotting and falling out at such a quick rate. Normally I would let minor details like this slide, but this isn't a minor detail. This is a pretty big element of the story. Also, while we are on the topic, I gotta say that the grand climax at the end of the story, to reveal how this all happened instead of something like a confrontation with the creature, was kind of anticlimactic and unsatisfying. But I'm not going to be too harsh on Liam because this was his first story, but oversights like addressing what was happening to the main character's original teeth while everything else was explained is what can make a story feel amateurish and keep it from aging well. But we all know the most important part of a horror story is the threat to the main character, and of all the criticisms I have highlighted, this is the one that bothered me the most. The creature being a mixture between the Kuchisaka Ona and the Tooth Fairy is an interesting concept, but ends up being the weakest element of the story, due to the lack of her presence and the absence of danger she poses to the main character. Her actions may be disturbing, but at the end of the day she's just a serial killer with a messed up face who is only present at the beginning and the end of the story. There is never a moment where she actually establishes herself as a threat until the end of the story, which again is the hardest hitting moment of the story, but it still isn't enough to make her memorable or intimidating. After taking everything I mentioned into consideration, Pretty Like Me was a pretty rough beginning to Liam's career, and that's without acknowledging technical issues like the background music drowning out his narration at points of the story. But despite everything I have said, I still enjoyed it. It's a perfectly acceptable amateur level tale that tried so hard to be something it wasn't that this horror story turned out to be more of a mystery or an overly blatant alternative version of a famous story that already exists. But throughout the story I was captivated, and it never felt like it dragged on or had an unnecessary moment that took me out of it. Liam triumphed in depicting the main character's fear and paranoia by having him do irrational things like throwing a drawer across the room, smashing the camera, and calling the police even though he had no evidence. It made the main character feel believably human, which is much harder to do than it sounds without it feeling forced. Pretty Like Me from a critical standpoint is nothing spectacular, but as a listener, I was engaged from the beginning to end, and by the time the story was over, I wanted more of it which is the biggest praise I can give any story. I'm sure Liam doesn't look back at the story with the fondest of memories, and in time I would have probably forgotten about this story altogether if it didn't represent something truly important. The first step made by Liam Vickers. To have the confidence to create something and post it on the internet for people like me to criticize takes resolve, and it's because of that resolve and Liam's creativity that he went from an average person just like anyone else writing an amateur level story to becoming a showrunner for one of the most popular web series on the internet with tens of millions of views. Liam's first step of his journey was neither impressive nor special in its own right, but that doesn't matter because what does is that he took that step to begin with. If you enjoyed this retrospective on Liam Vickers' first piece of work, I should mention that this video served as a first part of a podcast that I'm doing called Halogen Moth, where I will be going through every single story written by Liam on Scary Storytime with Liam and reviewing them just like I did with this one. If you are interested, become a member on this channel for 3 bucks a month and gain access to every episode I have finished so far, along with some neat emotes and whatever else I decide to upload for members. Bye bye for now.